Module 12 Basic Forms So far our macros have all relied upon inputs put straight into Excel spreadsheets. However there is an alternative method of input and this is for data to be taken from forms. Very simply what we want is for a user to be able to click a button and be prompted to enter the two numbers here, first num and second num, in order to get the output third num. So this will take us to within Visual Basic Editor itself. If you open the project window, which you can do view Project Explorer, then right click on Microsoft Excel objects, we can insert what is known as a user form. A user form is very simply a form into which users can put inputs that Excel can interpret using Visual Basic. As with sheets, we can name forms, so we'll call this form form inputs. Note that goes under name. The key thing to do is to click within the form itself and you get this toolbox of controls. I will show you what some of the controls mean over the next two modules. First I will show you how to use labels. If you click on the A, you can then select the top left hand corner and bottom right hand corner of a text box. Then by clicking inside, you can write some text such as please enter the two values to be added. You can adjust the location and size of the box by using the different corners of the box. You can also change the font size by selecting the text and locating the property that says font. If you click on the right hand side you get given all the normal options so we can make it size 10 font should we want. We can then add two more labels in the same way called first value for which we will do the same with the font size and then second value. Now we can just copy and paste the items we've already put in the form in this case, this is the quickest way of creating the box. Then we want to create spaces into which users can put values. So for this we use a text box which is indicated by the AB sign. In the same way, we drag a box out. We can then copy and paste that box to allow the user to enter their second value. Once a user has entered their values, they will want to get rid of the box and they can do this using buttons. So we select the command button icon. In the command button you can very simply write a caption which can be OK or on the other side we'll have a cancel option. We can then adjust the size of all the different icons to make the form look a little bit neater. At the moment the form has just been designed and does not link to Excel. Note the caption of the form says user form 1. Under caption we can change the form's properties to say inputs. Eventually somebody is going to be writing text in both our boxes and pressing both our buttons and the code is going to have to know how to refer to those boxes. So we can give them names, these are code names, such as text first, text second, we'll call this one command OK and we'll call this one command cancel. If we go back to Excel we will now attempt to link the form to the sheet in front of us so we'll create a button Again we can give it a code name but this is less relevant in this case so we'll just give it a caption enter values. Now let's view the code. The first thing the code should say is to load the form into the system so load form inputs. We can then use a series of commands for form inputs which you can see all of by using the dot. In this case we simply want to show our form. If we exit design mode we can see when we click enter values we see our form. However, OK and Cancel don't do anything at present. That's because we are yet to add code for them. So let's hit the cross in the top corner. If we return to editing our form, we can provide commands for when we hit the buttons on the form. Very simply, right click and click View Code. If the user hits Cancel, then all we want to do is hide the form. Now we can refer to it as Form Inputs, but as we are within the form's code itself, we can also call it Me and then say dot .hide. Under OK, we want to do something a bit more sophisticated. Ultimately, we want to hide our form, but first we want to enter our values in the text boxes onto our spreadsheet. So in this case, range first num would be equal to me dot, then it was text first, range second num would equal me dot text second, and of course range third num would equal the sum of the previous two ranges. However, this isn't quite correct as we will have a form open at the moment we click OK. 
That means we have to specify the ranges by what sheet they are on. In this case, we are on sheet calc. If we enter that across the board, then the code will do its job. So let's try entering values again. If I click cancel, the form disappears. If I enter a first value such as 1 and a second value such as 2 and click OK, we can see that we've put 1 and 2 in the first two cells, but we've got 12 in the final cell. The reason for our problem is that the entries in text boxes are treated as text. If we wish to treat them as values, we will have to refer to them as values. So we want to take the value of text first, the value of text second, and enter it in our spreadsheet. Now if we repeat our process and press OK, the final solution will come out as 3. There are a number of issues with this sheet at the moment. Firstly, if I enter a value of hello, I'm going to get an error. That's because you can't add hello to 2. So let's fast forward to the end of the macro, and we should add in some stipulations that both the entries have to be numbers. Then the user can go ahead, sum the totals, enter them in the sheet and hide the form. Otherwise, they should just be left with a message box which says both entries must be numeric. Now if we attempt to enter values, we get a warning message and get told to try again. There is also something else about the form which you may have noticed. When we open the form, it retains the form's previous values. Now if we hit cancel, we can look at how to give the user a blank box. This requires looking again at the code that we wrote when we first press the button to enter the values. Instead of just loading the form and showing it, we should specify the values of the two text boxes to be equal to nothing. This means both inputs will be blank when we press enter values. It works perfectly well. We can now enter new values, click OK, and we could even add sheet protection to ensure that no changes could be made to the sheet unless somebody had clicked the button. So here we'd unprotect our sheet at the start of the macro and protect it again at the end as we learned in the previous module. Provided we ensure all cells are locked, when we enter new values, we will not be able to make any changes to the spreadsheet. As you can see, it's protected.